When AREA started as a citizens initiative and partnership in Eindhoven, we wanted to involve everyone. In the modern local society, which had grown to include 150 nationalities with associated behavioral patterns, we could not limit ourselves only to the original Dutch. Areas is part of the City of Tomorrow, a foundation that conducts research into behavior in relation to awareness, human core values and the major challenges of our time. The way in which local Dutch people consciously or unconsciously deal with local air quality and lifestyle does not include the entire local population. Other language and behavioral cultures present, large population groups, representing more than 30% of the city, also had to be involved. We do not reach these other cultures through an article in the Dutch newspapers or an interview on Dutch TV. Or during meetings that are mainly attended by concerned retired Dutch people. The area citizen participation challenge developed with multiple and additional layers. The air pollution that we all cause together is a reflection of the way society is organized and experienced. We can try to address the societal organization, such as industries, mobility, energy use, global distribution patterns or agricultural dynamics. We try to do this by inviting governments, the business community and knowledge institutions to participate in the area's integral health collaboration. We also call this the hard side of society, the structure that was once contextually built up from a money-driven and dependent reality. Then there is the soft side, the human side of awareness about our behavior, its cultural interpretation, with our own contributions to modern problems and our learning and adaptation process. As the city of tomorrow, we try to involve those complex hard and soft sides in developing our human essentials, such as health and a healthy living environment, a focus that we do with the area's cooperation. Society is never uniform. This clusters dynamically around all kinds of human matters, including the islands of the many cultural presences. The overarching financial world of work, performance, competition and dependency tends to emotionally separate us from each other. We then only reason from self-centered financial interests. In structures with different cultures and layers, this often results in jealousy and judgment towards each other. The overarching world of human existential values, to which the city of tomorrow invites, turns out to have a unifying effect. It became important for areas to also involve the broad cultural community in the health challenge. Areas attention initially focused on the original Turkish and Moroccan communities that have a broad presence in the city. An exchange program for young people from Turkey was established thanks to the European Erasmus Plus program and the efforts of partner the BDT Foundation. In recent decades, the Turkish society had undergone a completely different development than the relatively self-contained, original Turkish community in Eindhoven. The area's invitation to collaborate on air quality was not responded to by the local Turkish community. This changed when we asked the visiting Turkish young people to build a bridge between the two cultures, local in Eindhoven and those from today's Turkey. The doors opened and the various meetings were experienced in a heartwarming and connecting manner by all who were present. When asked why it has been so difficult in all these years to connect the Dutch and Turkish cultures in the city, four motivations emerged. The first was that the original group of migrants were poorly educated. They came to work, not to integrate. People had the opportunity, long ago, to earn money and send it to needy relatives according to opportunities here that they did not have in Turkey. Secondly, there was the difficulty in mastering the language. The third argument was that people felt different from the start and therefore quickly felt unaccepted and even discriminated against. The Dutch view at the time, that foreigners should adapt to the Dutch language and culture, had a counterproductive and segregating effect on both the Dutch and the newcomers. It was easier to cluster with fellow countrymen than to deal with the Dutch. The same applied the other way around. Their children, on the other hand, soon found themselves between two worlds with all kinds of consequences. Finally, they always had the expectation that they would return to their home country, a view that continued to hinder the motivation for integration. With the arrival of the visiting students from Turkey, with their view of reality and inspired by the message of the city of tomorrow and areas, a warm bond was created. This bond made it possible to enter into a connecting dialogue about core human values, such as health and a healthy living environment. Ultimately, it turned out, in a broader and more modern sense, 
that this dialogue about human essential values was easier with people of foreign origin than the conservative Dutch population itself. The Dutch population is also in its entrenched comfort zone, which it often accepts and defends as the only and best reality. It's just the way it is. Trying to broaden this mentality meets resistance. This image fragment dates from The Fear of the Other, presentation in the Eindhoven Council Chamber from 2010, which can be listened to, in Dutch, on YouTube. This applies not only to openness and dealing with other cultures, but also, for example, to the resistance of certain groups to stop with fireworks at New Year's Eve because of air pollution. On the other hand, people who nowadays choose to come to the Netherlands experience different realities and are much more open to inspiration and social innovation. Especially when it comes to human values as an overarching and connecting reality, above and beyond the guiding demands of a financial world. Gradually, the city of tomorrow, with the area's challenge, and the resulting community for social inclusion, started to build bridges between those cultural islands. A completely new urban dynamic emerged, to which Dutch individuals and groups gradually joined. It was nice to see how the diversity of individual cultural expressions became open to and for each other. Unfortunately, the COVID measures threw a spanner in the works and those hard-to-achieve warm ties were again minimized. We were all back at square one, but with a long-term precedent that we could slowly build on again, with everyone else also starting to take initiative towards each other and not just towards themselves. The learning path has manifested itself positively, with many positive initiatives that we are once again trying to build on. The value of diversity was gradually experienced as positive, where previously it was seen as fearful and negative. Only from that healthy connecting positivity can other health-related adjustments be discussed together, such as working on our healthy air. These first areas experiences with the older Turkish community and our multicultural collaborations in Eindhoven can be read in the relevant chapter of the Global Areas publication.